in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. I'm just going to share a little bit and we'll done. We are done. Everybody's hungry already, I think. Um, Ephesians chapter 6 from verses 1. Ephesians 6, 1 to 9. That's it. So it says, this, this afternoon I'm going to talk about the right thing to do. The right thing to do. What's the right thing to do? And I was just thinking about the word correct. Sometimes we say correct thing. Sometimes we say right thing. And I was trying to figure out what is the difference between correct and what is the difference between right? It pretty much is the same. It is the same. But then what I started doing is, I started going through all the translations of the Bible in this particular verse. This Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. I looked at 30 translations of the Bible. 30 translations of the Bible. And you know what? All 30 translations never used any word apart from the word right. No translation said correct thing to do. It said the right thing to do. Interestingly, one of the translations, it's some young youngsters translate. It said the righteous thing to do. It didn't say right thing to do. It said that's the righteous thing to do. And it repeatedly dawned on me. God had a purpose when he never wanted to put the correct thing to do. He said the right thing to do because righteousness is standing right with God and so <clears throat> it says here in verse 1 children Ephesians 6 1 children obey your parents because you belong to the Lord for this is the right thing to do children obey your parents because this is not the correct thing to do <clears throat> it's not the best thing to do it's the right thing to do and if you look at one of the Bible translations, that's the righteous thing to do to obey your parents. Now, this generation of children are totally different to my generation and to some of your generations when you grow up. This generation of children, you tell them to do something, no, I can't. And so what if I do it? Why are you so narrow minded? Why are you so. All kinds of replies. It says, children. Obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Verse 2 says, Honor your father and mother. It just says, Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. It's not only the first commandment, it's also the first commandment with a promise. When you honor your father and mother. So the first thing to do is obey your father and mother because that's the right thing to do. The second is saying, honor your father and mother. Now, I've been, I've been looking around families and places and individuals and I'm, and I'm hardly finding, I have to search very hard to find children, big, small, medium size, married, doesn't matter. Very hard to find children, first of all, who are obeying their parents. And sometimes they do obey, but what I'm finding difficult to search for is honoring parents. It's more of dishonor, it's more of disrespect, it's more of acting smart, it's more of acting indifferent, it's acting with arrogance, acting with pride, except honor. The Bible says, honor your father and mother because it's the first commandment, and it's not just the first commandment, it follows with a promise. So when you honor your father and mother, you're not only obeying the first commandment, you're getting the promise, the gift of the promise of God. Now, what is honor? Interestingly, it never says, do all that they say. Thank God it didn't say that. Thank God the Bible never said, never said, do whatever your father and mother says, because sometimes father and mothers are weird. They'll tell you to do things that are weird. And maybe you should tell them, no, that's weird. Let's not do that. So it never asks you to do whatever your mother and father is telling you to do, but it asks you to honor them. There's a difference. If you go to honor someone, what would you do? What is honor? Another, another explanation for honor is what? Value them. Respect them. Commend them. You know, trust them. This is all part of the word honor. You don't have to listen to them. 
Maybe if you don't want to obey them, that's another story altogether. But dishonoring is not acceptable in the sight of God. So it says honor because of the first commandment and it comes with the promise. Verse 3 says, if you honor your father and mother, things will go well with you, for you, and you will have a long life on earth. Wow, I like that. Children, make note of that. Highlight that. Make a pendant out of that and put it around your neck. When you honor, when you honor your father and mother, it says, if you honor your father and mother, things will go well with you. Well, if something is not going well with you, kids, it's very simple. It's not that you're doing things wrong. If you're doing things right with dishonoring your parents, that's why things are not going well. Honor them. Things will go well with you and you will have a long life on earth. It's not saying long life in heaven. It's telling it's going to give you a long life on earth before you even reach heaven. What gives you long life? Not giving your parents money. I see sometimes many places, children think no end of themselves. Just because they're earning, just because they've got great jobs, they come and give money to their parents, they buy things to their parents, they, 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 they give whatever the parents want and then dishonor their parents. You'd rather not give anything to your parents, but honor them. That's the greatest that you ever give them the gifts. Don't furnish their house, they don't want that. You can furnish their house and unfurnish all their feelings and emotions with your dishonor. Bad. Don't try to impress your parents with your gifts and your money. It's not what they want. Encourage them, respect them with honor. Respect. That's what is important. I see some families where the children are so honorable to their parents. Oh my gosh. As much as they're honorable to God, the same they do with their parents. And interestingly, <coughs> in there are a lot of nice things in our Indian culture. One of the nice things in our Indian culture is they believe parents are God. Parents, they say, Amma, Appa, Kadavul Mari. In one way it's true. Not literally. But in terms of, I know what they mean. They mean in honor. They mean in honor and respect. Think about it. Think about it. When you were having a hard time, your parents took care of everything. They never gave you that part of that to bear. Your parents have never asked you to share in their pain and their problems. They took it all upon themselves. So what's the difficulty to honor them? What's the difficulty to respect them? What's the difficulty? It says you'll have a long life. You will have a long life. Verse 4 says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Some fathers have this habit. They're very provocative. They provoke the children. They irritate the children. Interestingly, it never talks about the mothers provoking. It says, fathers don't provoke. Maybe it should say, mothers don't nag. <laughs> Fathers, don't provoke your children. Sometimes I've seen some fathers, just because they are tall and just a little healthy and they have a little smaller son. Hey, what? What? And then I've seen the other side. The sons are big and tall, the father's like this. He never talks like that to the son. He get one slap. It doesn't matter who's tall and who's big and short. It matters that your honor remains intact. Don't provoke your children. Provoking is pushing them, unnecessarily pushing them. Don't provoke. Never provoke your kids. It's the Bible's instructions. It says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with discipline and instruction. So what's God telling us? Give them this discipline, teach them discipline, give them instructions. Don't provoke, don't force Anything. Instruct. Please don't do that. No, no, I want to do it. Please don't do that. No, no, I want to do it. Back off. Let them do it. I've done that as a father. Never in my life, never in my life, 
in front of my children this morning and say, never in my life have I put my finger on my daughters. Forget hand or palm. I've never even gone like this. Even this action has never come to me. I've never touched my daughters in anger. But I used tone and intonation. When they were small, if they do anything wrong, hey! Dad is angry, dad is angry. I never beat. I instruct. Don't do that. Sometimes they don't listen, they go do it, and they come back, they realize. So it says, don't provoke. Use discipline and use instructions. You'll get better results. Discipline and instruct that comes from the Lord. And it says in verse 5, <coughs> excuse me, slaves obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. Isn't it interesting that God's talking about slaves being obedient to masters? It's spiritual. It's spiritual. Try to please them all the time. Saying, slaves, please your master. Be obedient to them. Serve them. Try to please them all the time. Not just when they are watching you. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. Work with enthusiasm. As though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Selling, talking, talking to the slaves. Work with passion and enthusiasm. Just like how you were serving God, not man. So God's saying, there's a blessing for slaves if they follow the instructions. God is okay with slaves and masters. It's in the Bible. There's nothing wrong with slaves and masters. The slave and master is almost like a teacher and student. So fear them sincerely as you would serve Christ. Try to please them. And verse 7 says, work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than free people. Remember, verse 8 says, remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do, whether we are slaves or free. God will reward us all for the good we do. For the good we do. Listen, listen. Never says God will reward all, all of us for the ministry we do. It says for the good we do. Good necessarily does not have to be ministry oriented. Doesn't have to be church oriented. God has put good in all of us. Everybody has good. We all have good in us. The only difference is some use it extensively, some use it medium, some use it less, some choose not to use it. God has put love in all of us. He's put kindness in all of us. He's put, he's put all of this in all of us. Remember, let me remind you. Who are we created in the image of? Who are, who are we created? We are created in the image of God, right? So if we are created in the image of God, what are the things in us? The things that are in God are in us. Patience, kindness, love, affection. Remember the fruits of the Spirit? All of those fruits of the Spirit that is in God is in us because we are created in the image of God. So don't ever tell anybody, I'm not so generous. Don't ever say that. Don't ever tell anybody, I'm not as loving as that person. You cannot say something like that. You're making fun of God. Because all of God is in you. You are choosing to take away 50% of all of God's love and show the other 50%. You chose that. Don't say, I don't have it. You have it. You don't want to use it. This is like you having a thousand rupees with you and someone comes and says, can you give me thousand rupees urgently? My son is in the hospital. And you say, I don't have thousand, I have 500. Wow. Really? You have 100% of God's generosity, love and kindness in you. And if you're showing someone 20%, you have chosen to cancel the balance 80% or not give it. That's your problem, not God's. So it says here, work with enthusiasm. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of you. And verse 9 says, Masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Don't threaten them. Now it's giving instructions to masters. 
First it gave instructions to slaves. Now saying, masters, be kind to your slaves. Don't threaten them. Remember, you both have the same master in heaven. Whether you're a slave or master, both of you have only one master in heaven, that's God. And he has no favorites. Who has no favorites? God has no favorites. Poor, rich, famous, infamous, kind. He has no favorites. All are equally loved by him. People will have favorites. Family members will have favorites. Pastors will have favorites. Relatives will have favorites. We all have favorites. God has no favorites. Everybody is equal in the eyes of God. So it says, be careful. As a slave, <coughs> excuse me, do what you're supposed to do. As a, as a master, do what you're supposed to do. As a child, obey, honor your parents. Fathers, don't provoke your children. And I'm adding, mothers, don't nag them. <coughs> don't nag them. Sometimes I, I keep watching my wife and Zip it. Just zip it. Leave them. No, no, you're spoiling them. You, you. Leave them. Do you think I don't know how to say the same things? Do you think I don't have the words to express when I say them doing something that's not right? But that's not the point. The point is God's telling us, instruct your children. Discipline them, instruct them. Don't threaten them, don't shout at them, don't provoke them, don't nag them. That's part of the devil's technology. God's technology, show them instruction. Give them opportunity. Show them the way and back out. Leave them. Don't do more than that. It's important to work together in the family. When my kids were small, I remember, they'd, they'd go to their mother and they'll ask, no, can we go here? And the mother will say, no, you can't. And maybe they'll come to me, dad, can we go there? They will not tell me that they went and told their mother, and mother said, no. No, dad, can we go there? And I said, what did your mother say? <laughs> she said, no, it's no. It's the same, it's no, period. We need to know what God wants us to do, how he wants us to do it. Sometimes I see kids being thrashed at home, red and blue, literally thrashed. You think that child's going to learn after the thrashing? No, That's, that child's going to be learning some F's and B's. I'll end with a story that I've said this many times, a story. There's a father and son that went for a birthday party. Went there and the father sat down. The son had some friends, they all were playing. And suddenly some friends came to the father and said, Uncle, your son is doing a lot of mischief and beating the other children out. No, 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 all complaining about the son. So the father looked at the boy and said, what happened? No, 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 dad, I sit down here. Sit here. The boy said, Dad, I didn't do anything. Sit down. You can't go anywhere. Dad, listen to me. Sit down. Dad, I didn't do. Sit down. The son looks at the other. <laughs> they go back home. Dinner time. Everybody's having dinner. Mom, dad, sisters are been there. Boy's there. He's not eating his food. Mom's looking. What happened? Asking husband. What happened? Ask him. Son, what happened? What happened? Please tell me, tell the husband. What happened? You know your son, not his son. You know your son. When it caused trouble, gave problems to the other children. So he came. I made him sit. I made him sit. I made sure that I made him sit. Mother looks at the boy. Is that true? Did did dad punish you? The boy said, I sat on the outside, I'm still standing on the inside. 
Or I told the mother, yeah, I sat on the outside for dad. I am still standing on the inside. I care a damn about what he said. You see, we are treating our kids in such a way that they are sitting on the outside and still standing on the inside. That's not an achievement. The achievement is they sit on the inside. They don't need to sit on the outside. They need to sit on the inside. That's a blessing and an achievement. So don't take the cane and thrash your kid and look at the neighbor and say, See? I'm in control. You don't know you're not. You're an idiot. You're not in control. He's in control. She's in control. They're still standing on the inside. That's not how we treat. We treat with discipline. We treat with instructions that God tells us to do. And the rest we leave to God. Remember, these are not our kids. It's God's kids. They're God's kids. Let God take care of them. Pray for them. Love them. Honor them. Be with them. Trust them. Try to work with them. Tell them what you feel and then stop. Don't give more. That's exactly what God wants us to do. Let's all stand.